Hello, my name is Joseph Pena. Today I'll be talking about inheritance and the super and sub classes. The super class and sub class use inheritance in order to share information from one main general class to other more specialized classes. Inheritance allows a new class to extend an existing class. The new class inherits the members of the class it extends. It does not work and vice versa. Basically, the subclass gains access to all of the public variables and methods that the superclass has and uses them for its own purposes. Another way to explain inheritance is by using the is a relationship. For example, a poodle is a dog. A flower is a plant. A soccer player is an athlete. The dog, plant, and athlete are considered the general class, while a poodle, flower, and soccer player are the specialized class. Now remember, inheritance does not work vice versa. It only works when a subclass inherits things from a superclass. A superclass cannot inherit anything from a subclass. This next example will show you just how to inherit things from the superclass. Okay, in this example, I'm going to create two classes. One is the purchase class, and the other is the candy class. Um, I've already created purchase and the demos for both classes. Purchase demo, candy demo. The purchase class has two variables, price, tax, and five methods. A set price, get price, a set tax, get tax, and a get total. The demo is just asking for a price, a tax, and it will return a total. I'll show you how it works. I'm going to run the program. Let's say we have $20 before tax, a 6% tax, and you'll end up with a total price of $21.20. Now, candy, in order to make candy work and be the subclass, you need to make sure it extends. Oops, let's go back over to candy here extends purchase. Those two words right there tell Java that the candy class was going to be the subclass of purchase and that candy has access to the variables and methods that are that purchase has. Now let's complete this real quick. Okay, this is the first method that we're going to be calling from purchase. See so here's set price, we're using the total from class, we're plugging that into the set price over here in purchase. Let's complete candy class real quick. And we're done with candy. Let's save the file, compile, no errors. Okay, let's move this over here real quick. And let's pull up a candy demo. Alright, the candy demo class 
It's just asking for the number of pieces of candy and how much the candy cost, etc. Now down here where it returns the total, it's using the method get total from the purchase class that we created earlier. See, right here, get total. Now if we compile this, no errors, and run it. Let's see, we so I bought I like candy, so I bought twenty pieces of candy at a dollar fifty each. And there you go. The total price was thirty one eighty. This is a UML diagram. It displays the two classes and the variables and methods that they used. Purchase is the superclass and candy is the subclass. Since candy extends purchase, it inherits all of the public methods that purchase has. This is shown by the little arrow from candy to purchase. This means candy can call on and use set price, get price, set tax, get tax, and get total for its own purposes. Price was declared as a private variable, so candy is not able to directly access it. If price was a public variable, then candy would be able to directly access it without using the set and get methods. Alright, I hope that was useful. Good luck coding, and I'll see you next time. Bye!